Hey there, everyone. This is Dr. Gwen from the Dr. Gwen International Training and Empowerment Academy. Thank you for joining me again today. Now, today we're going to continue our discussion about passions. And for the last two days, we have identified what passions are. And we went to Merriam-Webster to find that definition. And basically, we said passions are those things that really excite you, that you really love to do. We talked about awareness, and that awareness is a prerequisite for you to identify your passions. That if you are not tapped in, and if you are not aware of your feelings and that deep gut sense, your heart space, it's going to be a challenge to find your passions. Yesterday, I gave you some questions to ask yourselves if you are going to identify your passions. What are those questions that you need to ask yourselves? You've got a list of questions, and I gave you an assignment. I asked you to find about five people to ask some questions of. Now, you may not have gotten around to doing that as yet, but I encourage you to go back and to watch the previous replays and to do those exercises so that you can arrive at the questions. Now, what do you do once you have arrived at the questions? So you have asked yourself the questions. You have an idea of the things that you really love to do. What is your next step? Well, I have a resource that I'll be sharing with you today that's going to give you uh, some further steps that you can take to get there. But let me just review some of these with you today. Now, once you have your list of passions, the next thing I'm going to ask you to do is to make a list of your strengths, your talents, and your gifts. These are the things that come really easily for you that sometimes you may not even realize that it's easy for you because when you have a gift, sometimes you take it for granted and you think that everyone else has the same ease in performing this. And this is why you need someone else to help you to find this process. So make a list of your talents, your gifts, and your strengths. So now you're going to have two separate lists. You have a list of your passions, the things you like to do and the things that others say you're good at and now you're going to have your list of your talents your gifts and your strengths now i have designed a feature i call the magic money matrix and i'm gonna invite you to just spend a few moments here with me as I review the matrix, I'm going to just show you what it looks like. I don't know if you are seeing that. You can see it comes out of the free resource guide that I'm going to give you. So now that you've seen that, what I'm going to do is to give you the instructions so that you can actually use this matrix to help you to arrive at some possible choices of things they're going to do. Now, along, if you create a table, and along the vertical axis, you're going to list all of your passions. That's the things you love to do. All of the things you went out and found from other people that they told you that you're good at. You list that along the side. And then across the top, list those talents, those gifts, and those strengths. The experiences that you have. Maybe you had a job at some point in time, and there were certain aspects of that job that you really liked to do. It really, really energized you and caused you to feel happy about doing it. You want to pay attention to those things. So you, you make a list across the top, and on my chart here, you can see these are the lists going across the top of those talents, skills, and experiences. Then down the side, you create all of those gifts, those things that you love to do. Inside of the matrix, 
what you're going to do is to find the intersection. So for each passion, you're going to find a skill, you're going to find a gift and an experience. They're going to intersect. In the middle of that intersection, what I want to do is to identify what things can you do with those talents and those gifts intersecting. So looking at my first example, I have one of my gifts here. This is a pretend gift because this is really not mine. Interior design, and this may be showing reversed in the camera. So it's interior design is the, the training skill and experience. And then on the column with my passions, there's writing, okay? So at the intersection of writing and interior design, I'm asking myself, what can I do that's going to benefit the world or benefit someone else with this intersection of my writing gifts or my writing passions and my interior design training or experience or skill. And let me read what I came up with here in this matrix. I could write blogs about designing. I could write some books about interior designing. I could write curriculum for interior designing. So those are just three examples using my passion of writing and my experience with interior design. So you can see how that's going to turn out to be really nice for you. You're gonna have a nice sheet of possible things that you can do. Then you move to the next column, which for me, it's teaching, it says there, and, and writing is that same gift. So I'm moving across and I'm filling in each one of the cells at the intersection as you can see. So you fill that in and now you have a full page of things that you possibly could consider. Now you may be thinking, well, that's going to be rather simple after that. It may be now that you have opened up Pandora's box because now you have a bunch of options that you can choose from as your passions. So now you're going to need to get to the point where you can figure out what's next for you. But this that I just showed you is my magic money matrix was designed and inspired by some research that I did a few years back using this matrix to create a lot of different things that turned out to be quite profitable in terms of research and design and statistics, which doesn't apply here, but the principle still applies and you can actually use this matrix to help you. So now you've got the magic money matrix. And I also told you that I was going to give you some resources that you can actually use to help you to figure out what else is possible. I'm going to, at the end of this broadcast, I'm going to type in a link that you can click and access a free resource that's going to give you a guide. The Magic Money Matrix is a part of it, and all of those other exercises are parts of it. But now you'll have those questions in that workbook format that you can work through and actually get the real gist of how this works so that you can utilize this to benefit your life. So I'll give you, I'll mention it now. It's www.passions2earnings.com. That's P-A-S-S-I-O-N-S 2-T-O earnings, E-A-R-N-I-N-G-S dot com. So that is the website where you would just simply enter your first name and your email address and that will come right to your inbox with that resource that will help you to walk through all of this now also in that resource are a list of other areas or ideas that you can utilize to see how you can utilize your passions. But once you have this matrix, what do you do with it? 
it's going to be a toss up for you to figure out which one of these things will speak louder to you. Now yesterday I indicated that if you have more than one passion, your heart is going to recognize the singing of one of them louder. One of them will sing louder to you or loudest to you, depending on whether you have two or more than two, but one will sing quite strongly. Now it's important that you have to be aware of those emotions and you have to get out of your head. Because if you get into your head and you start reasoning, it's going to keep you in a circular manner and you'll be going back and forth for quite a long time. Let me share my story with you. Four years ago, maybe six years ago, I told you that I had walked away from a full-time job. I felt that I had accomplished everything that I needed in my job. So here I am in this position and I am not feeling fulfilled the way I thought I would having accomplished all that I accomplished. And my mind starts going in a circle. And I started feeling more and more imploded. It was as though my world inside was crashing in. I feel like once I've committed to something that I need to follow through with it. And I had just gone to this university to make my imprint and my mark on the students and things weren't going inside for me the way I wanted it or the way I thought it would and so I jumped off and went full-time into real estate investing I wasn't thinking there was a passion or something that would connect to my heart at that time in fact it hadn't occurred to me that that was the case because like you I was also socialized to believe that you go to school, get a good education, and then you get a good job and everything will be just honky-dory. I did have a good job before I went to the university. I also was uh, an executive administrator, and I was making pretty good money, nice money. But the money was not the only thing. I wanted to make a difference. When I went into the real estate investing, I started off quite excitedly because I knew of the opportunities that it would create for me. I had created a nonprofit organization to help single moms that are homeless with their children, especially their school-aged son, because I had learned that these mothers are separated from their boys, their preteen boys, and because the boys were at this age, they couldn't go into the homeless shelters with their moms because there was no type of privacy. So the moms were separated from these children. And the boys couldn't go to the men's shelter because they were too young. And that tore into my heart. So I figured my real estate investing would get me where I wanted to go so I could fund my nonprofit organization. But as I started working in this real estate investment business, things were doing really great. I, I liked the creativity, my first project, my second project. And by the time the third and the other started coming around, it felt routine. Plus, I would remember going off to the houses in the heat of the day, the hot sun. Sometimes these houses are deserted and your heart would be throbbing as you unlock the door to go inside just in tension preparing for the worst but hoping for the best and so i would do my analysis and i would go back and run the numbers and put the house under contract but it became one thing after the other my creativity was not involved my thought processes were not involved. My thinking mechanism were not involved. And that's who I am. I like to create. I like to think. I like to create stuff intellectually. That's just who 
I am in terms of what satisfies me and makes me feel more fulfilled. And I remembered the feeling that, oh, this is not it. But then what am I going to do? I was too scared to make another move. Number one, I didn't want my friends and other people looking at me as if I wasn't sure of what I wanted to do, right? That was not the type of thing that I wanted. And being more concerned about that was not the best thing for me. You know, think about you right now. Are you in a situation where you find that you know it's not for you and yet you are stuck there, number one, because you may be worried about what other people may be saying. Number two, because you are scared of what the option may bring. I was there. If I go off, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And so I allowed myself to start imploding. And my dissatisfaction grew and I remembered saying to my husband, you know, this is not it. I know it's not it. Challenges started happening and they were almost supernatural challenges. It's like you're working and it's not supposed to go that way. And those were clues to me that I needed to take a step back and to assess the situation. So when I talked to my husband, I said, you know, I really don't think this is it for me. And I said, plus, look at all of the weird challenges that are showing up. It's just really weird. And then he said, well, you know, I know we don't give up off of stuff. However, you know, things get challenging at times. I said, absolutely. And you know, he knows I'm dogged. That's the way he describes me. I'm dogged. I don't give up. But this was a different kind of challenge. Deep in my soul, I knew it wasn't what I needed. But I allowed myself to kind of ride the tide and go on a little bit longer. All the while, this feeling was increasing. And this is a sense that you can't depend on anybody else, no matter how much they love you and care for you. You cannot depend on anyone else to tell you what you should be doing, what you are going to be passionate about. They're going to miss the mark. You already have that internal inkling of what you at least should not be doing. So don't allow yourself to continue to struggle and fuss and fight in that situation where you know that's not where you need to be. You deserve so much better. And it does not necessarily mean that you're going to get up and walk away from what you currently have like that. You need to lay plans. However, you can incrementally begin to do things that will get you some freedom over time. So the free resource that, I'm, that I mentioned earlier at that link will give you some ideas of what you need to do. However, you are going to get to the point where you have to choose between a list of things because you can't do them all. So how do you really get down to choosing that? How do you really get down to choosing that? If you have more than one passion, how do you do that? I'm going to share with you a couple questions that you can ask yourself once you get through the process. And these questions are simple questions. However, they can be quite complicated because you need to be sure that you're not staying in your head mentally. If you stay in your head, you are going to not come up with the right answer for your heart. And remember I said yesterday that your heart will never lead you in the wrong place. Your mind will continuously challenge you and reason upon the things that you already know and you have read or you've heard. But you really want to come straight from your heart when you're trying to get to the source of what it is. 
So if you have, let's say, a list of six maybe passions, then tackle them one at a time to figure out, go through the list, and just imagine if you're engaged in that activity, what it would be like. Now, I'm, sometimes you can't imagine it. Some of these things, you just have to be immersed in it to really, really tell. But this is a guideline that's going to help you. Now, once you've gone through that, and now you have a bunch of things that you think you're going to feel good about, now is the time to test them. And typically, when I test, there are three basic questions that I like to ask. The first one is you're eliminating between two because you're taking two at a time. And you're going to go by the process of elimination to find out which one feels better. If you're doing number one passion and number two passion, which do you think feels better? Now, if you get up here, it's going to mess up because up here, it's going to go something like this. Well, if I do passion number one, then I may be more recognized in society for doing passion number one. Mm -mm, don't go there. Promise me you won't go there. Because if you're making your decisions based on your thoughts or ego, you will not be happy. There are too many people who are unhappy because they've made their choices that way. What looks better to society, what's more influential, what will give me a credibility boost. You don't want to go there when you're making your decision. So if you've asked question number one and you have not gotten the response back, now it's time to go to question two. And you want to find out if you are doing passion one, but you can never, ever do passion two, or if you're doing passion two and you can never, ever do passion one, which feels better. And really be aware, really be aware. And the third question involves all of your senses, really. You want to go there with your feelings with your touch, with your smell, with your hearing. What do you hear when you're doing these things and you're immersed in it, doing it to the fullest? Without one, without the other. Typically, once you get down to these three sources of questions, you will eliminate. Then the one that you've eliminated, you go on and you work with that one for the next one and the next one. And you should arrive at the number one. Now, once you know your passions, there are quite a few other things that you need to do to cause this to work well for you. And this is not a part of this broadcast. It's something that we will talk about for the future on Monday, what I want to do is to come back and talk about that fear factor and not necessarily fear itself, but how that plays into your living a passionate life. And how have you identified some people who are on their jobs who absolutely are outperforming maybe a lot of people and deep down, they have that disconnect where they dislike their jobs. We're going to talk more about that on Monday. Now, I want to leave you with a book, a resource I promised you that I would do so that you can begin to read up to find out what possibilities are available for you in your passions. You don't want to be like me running off to do something just because you think it's the next hot thing. You must source that with your passion. The way that worked out is the whole thing fell apart for me, completely left me bankrupt. And I had to take a good look at myself to figure out what do I want? What do I love? 
I knew deep down in my soul when I was doing that, what it was sort of what I needed to be doing, but I completely ignored that. Welcome, welcome. And I completely ignored all of that, that I was doing. And so it ended up collapsing, leaving me completely high and dry. And I was broken. I was completely broken. So you probably have an idea of what it is that you're passionate about deep, deep inside. And if you're struggling with that, your brain is probably engaged, giving you some other reasons why it shouldn't be what you should be doing. And you don't want to engage that brain when you're going there, when you're going to that heart space. That's where you need to stay because it's that heart space that's going to keep you happy and going time after time. So what do you do? Once you've found out what that thing is, what can you do with? We'll talk more about that on Monday. And then also what I want to do is share this book with you. Uh, this book is called The Millionaire Messenger, and this is by Brendan Burchard. This is what it looks like, and I know you're seeing it backwards, but that's the book that you can get that will give you some ideas of what is possible for you. Now, this is not just the only things because these strategies are relating to people who want to be out there and touching people's lives in terms of writing and speaking and all that other kind of activities. But that may not be the thing that inspires you. Perhaps you're inspired by something else. So go through that list that I have given you Go through that list that you have written and use the Magic Money Matrix. Now, I invite you to go on to the www.passionstoearnings.com and download that free guide. And then that guide, will you will see the Magic Money Matrix and blank worksheets for you with all the exercises to help you to discover what it is that you really love to do. So I don't see any questions, and if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the box. I don't actually see, I don't want to push a button and get disconnected like I did the first time. <laughs> you know, I pushed that button and bling, I disappeared off of the air. So <laughs> I want to do that today. But I see you and I welcome you. I can't see the names, but I certainly can see that you're there. And I thank you so much for joining me. And if you have any questions, what I will do once I get offline is I will address those. And when I'm on my personal live Facebook account, I can see the comments and I can see what people are doing. For some reason, this page seems like it's a little different. Maybe it's me. I need to learn how it works. And the fact is, I'm just here with you, and that's all that's important for me. And if I missed any questions that you have typed in the box, then I'll be sure to address it once I get over there. So you've looked at the Magic Money Matrix. I've given you the book as a resource, and I've walked you through how you can whittle down your passion to your top one thing. So we're going to take that a little bit further on Monday. And on Monday also, we're going to talk about why we have some people who perform and are hating, absolutely hating what they do. And I'm sure you've probably somewhat guessed a part of it. Of course, they're not passionate about it, but then there are other elements too that are involved. So thank you so much for joining me once again. This is Dr. Gwen. Please like my page. Follow me over there on Twitter at the Dr. Gwen. I'm also on Instagram. I am on Twitter, LinkedIn, probably Google Plus, just about everywhere. So follow me to see what I'm posting. And there is a survey on this page that I'm asking you to give your input on how things are going on the page, 
the things that I'm present to you? What do you think I need to tweak that could be more beneficial for you? So if you would please take some time and complete that survey, that would be so, so much appreciated. Thank you so much for joining me. You have the most amazing weekend and I will see you on Monday once again at 3 p.m. right here on this page. Take care.